Hello students, today we're going to be learning about photosynthesis, the process of combining light or using light to combine water and carbon dioxide to make glucose and oxygen. So which organisms do photosynthesis? Well we have these organisms called autotrophs. Now autotrophs are also known as producers because they produce food or glucose and also other substances. Don't forget, they don't just make glucose, they make all the other molecules of life. Auto means self, troph means feeder. So it's a self feeder, it makes food for itself. And here are some things like a protist. A protist are unicellular um, eukaryotes that have a nucleus and this one happens to have a chloroplast so it's, and it's green, if you notice that. So it's, it makes its own food. And cyanobacteria, which you've heard about, they also make their own food. Plants, which are very popular. Notice the green color around. And algae, which include kelp or seaweed and other unicellular protists. And so these make their own food, photosynthesis. Now let's look at heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are other feeders. So hetero means other, trophs mean feeders. So they depend, they get their energy by eating others. Since they can't make it, they got to eat others to obtain their energy or food molecules. Um, they're also called consumers. They consume others. All right, so where does this happen? It happens in any part of the plant that's green. So I chose, uh, in this case, a leaf. It could also be the stem. And in the leaves, you have these important structures uh, in, the cell, in the plant cells, which are called chloroplasts. So I'm going to zoom into this plant cell's uh, chloroplast. Here you have chloroplast, which is an, you have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. And you have these important areas called the thylakoids. Each disc is called a thylakoid. It looks like a cookie. So here's the thylakoid, another thylakoid, and many thylakoids. All these in a stack are called granum. So, and then the area in here where there's a lot of liquid, it's called the stroma area. Now, what's important about the thylakoid? Well, this is where the magic happens. It happens on the membrane of the thylakoid. You can see here the membrane, the, well, you don't see it there, but there's chlorophyll molecules lined up right there on the membrane. These are proteins that trap the sun's energy and also give the plant its color. And let's zoom in a little more. So how does this work? Well, light, as you all know, is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. And as the light hits, only all the colors except green are absorbed and used for photosynthesis. Green is a color that's reflected out, and it goes to your eye, and that's why you see the plants as green. And green is also transmitted through. So again, the idea is that it's green because green bounces back out. It's not absorbed. All the other, color, um, the other colors and their energies are absorbed from the light. So chloroplast. So let's look at this structure again. Again, you have, the, you have the stroma here, and you have three thylakoids that we're showing. So what happens? They call them the light-dependent reactions because light is involved. We're getting light, and we're using water. Why water? Well, water has some electrons to donate. It has some very powerful electrons that it's going to give to these two molecules, NADPH and ATP. Just think of them as batteries, and we need to charge them. So we need light to hit here split the water, get the electrons from water, throw them onto NADPH and ATP, and now that's how we charge these two molecules because we're going to need them for the next reaction. And as a result of splitting water, we get oxygen, which is an accident, but it's an accident that helps us breathe and survive and break down glucose later on. Okay, and don't forget, plants also need oxygen. Okay, they make it, but they need it so they can break down glucose later on. And now again, remember we have these electrons that came from water and were now transferred on, transferred onto NADPH and ATP. And now these batteries are charged. They now can turn the conversion or or turn carbon dioxide into sugars. And so that's why we needed to get NADPH and ATP for this important reaction called the light independent reactions also called the dark reactions. It's not because they happen in the dark, okay? They can happen in the daytime, but they just don't need light. Uh, these reactions are also called the Calvin cycle. All right, so what happens to the sugars that we make? Again, this happened out in the stroma. Two reactions, light and dark. Uh, yeah, light and dark. 
So what happens to the sugars? Well, we can turn them into anything else. Let's say we need monosaccharides. I mean, we might, we might want to make glucose, fructose, other things. Maybe we turn them into amino acids because we need to build proteins to build up the plant structure. Maybe we need some lipids or fatty acids. So we're going to build up more cell membranes or nucleic acids. Maybe it's time to make some DNA. We have to reproduce or the cell has to divide in, through mitosis. So we can, we can do that. Or we can store sugar as energy. So how do we do that? We store them as starches, which all it is is just combining you know, these glucose molecules together in a polysaccharide, and that's our storage form. And so if we need it later on, we just start picking apart a glucose at a time and separating the polymer into monomers. Um, or we can break down the sugar by, and release its energy, and we do this in the mitochondria. So maybe you need the energy quickly, and so you go that route. Let's look at the equation now. So the equation, let's see, what are the three things that went in? Well, water comes in, light, and carbon dioxide. There you go, water, light, and carbon dioxide. Those three things are going in. What's coming out? Oxygen and sugars, or glucose. Oxygen and glucose, there you go.